ask you the same question, but we're going to get cracking because we've got a lot of people, uh, we've got a lot of people um, watching. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Sorry about the technical issues we had at Hoppers One. It's, um, it's taken us about 24 minutes to sort them out, but we are now live across all channels again. We're going to go from the top. Um, so, apologies to those that did hear some of the introduction, but yeah, we're live here at the Engineering Technology Group in Wellsbourne, where today we're going to be looking and watching the Vulcan. Um, TC200 machine in action doing a cutting demonstration, a very impressive cutting demonstration um, thanks to Hypermills software which is the Max Machining High Performance Turning um, solution. Now I'm joined by Steve uh, and Dominic from Open Mind. Um, we'll probably start by saying Steve if you could just give us a bit of a recap let's talk about the Vulcan for those that haven't seen the machines across our channels uh, recently. I know you've done quite well with the machine since it's been introduced. Um, give us give us an overview of the TC200 that we're going to see in well, action you, today. You're testing me. I need to think what I said half an hour ago but yeah the, we're, today we've got the live show on the, the TC200 so it's um, one of a machine from a, a large family um, of turning centres, um, so 8-inch eight eight inch chucker fanic, fanic control. OK, now we, we, we're encouraging, as we always do with these shows, for people to um, tell us they're watching. Uh, we've already had quite a few shout-outs. In fact, we've already had questions as, as well about the machine, one of which um, is quite pertinent to what we're going to discuss. Actually, one of uh, the, on YouTube, they've asked whether this machine is a box guideway or a linear machine, Steve, because that's quite important for he heavy heavy. Yeah, customers. so t uh, we have two options, both linear and, and boxway. Um, when we're naturally being a, a, a commodity machine, we, start, we, uh, we stock both variants. Um, so today the demonstration we're doing it on is a, is a, is a boxway machine. Okay, Dominic, um, Hypermills Software, uh, you are very well known around the world uh, and I would say predominantly on the milling side, which is you know where you've got a lot of users, but I know turning is becoming a big part of what you do now, isn't it? Um, tell us about what we're going to see today. Yes, Paul, um, you're 100% correct there. Um, as you say, we are known for milling. But uh, over the last 18 months, a lot of investment's been done in our turning application. Um, and it's nice to see how, how it's developed in recent times. Uh, what you're going to see today is our max turning that we use uh, with a full radius insert tool. Um, massive gains on cycle time, tool life, and machine performance. So yeah, it's a it's a win 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 situation all the way. Now, interestingly, you'll travel around a lot of machine tool companies introducing your software to machines. One of the purposes of to, of today's uh, stream is to obviously see what we can get out of what ETG class as an entry level turning centre, how we can enhance the performance. Um, your uh, what you would say so far about what you've seen using this strategy on this machine? How does the machine handle it? What we like, we've tested it again this morning, and we've seen um, it's brought the load a lot lower than I expected. Um, normally, they say it's good when you eat it, can eat it about the amber, the sixty percent mark, um, which we are eating at this stage. But what do you mean by the load? What the machine? The, the machine load that? in general. Um, as you look at the load bar, uh, you always want to keep it green amber, the green orange amber area, and that's around the sixty percent mark. Um, and if you see on a good machine when the X is quite low, the X stroke is quite low, or the load, then you know you're running on a good machine, which is what this machine is showing you today. A very low load on the X. Okay, so if that load was higher, this uh, this demonstration might take a little bit longer, the, the cycle time would be yes, longer. Yes, you tend to reduce then on the cut. You uh, try to reduce the cut and don't be too aggressive on it, yes. Okay, so um, what, what as I say, it, please do comment, uh, get your questions in. We're going to have a Q&A at the end of the show, the last five minutes. Now, the whole stream today is going to last about half an hour. In just a, a couple of minutes' time, Steve's going to press cycle start, and we're actually going to watch the demonstration and talk um, over the top of it. Now, it's fair to say, uh, Dominic, the application that we've got in here doesn't look to me as uh, like a, a real-life component. Maybe you could give us an illustration of the sorts of parts and applications where this strategy does really fit. What do people need to be making? Yeah, when you look at stage machining, Paul, that's probably, I would say, a go-to straight away. Because in the factory that you see on the machines most of the time is half an hour, 40 minute cycles to rough bullets out, where you put this tool in, you have less tools in the machine to do the stage machining, and you're also gaining a massive cycle time. And um, the components you probably put is like your motorsport or your bevels, your bevel gears, um, camshafts, deep pocket areas, grooves uh, areas, areas like that. So applicable to roughing and finishing as well? Yes, we recommend it in the roughing stage and then just put a finishing path on it at the end. Mm. But um, it's focusing more on reducing that roughing cycle. 
Now, because we always hear companies will say, you know, they they may say, well, actually, that you know, I'm not making parts that are suitable for this applicate or this type of machining. If you had to put a percentage on how many companies you think could benefit from a strategy like this in general engineering, how how many would it be? Do you think? I would probably say around the 60, 70 percent. To be honest, Paul. Um, uh, nowadays, with this type of environment, um, you reduce less tools. You got rest tools. Even if it's simple areas that you want to machine, this will be a lot quicker than your normal cycles that you see um, coming from a founding background, where you use your G seventy one, G seventy two cycles. This is the new way. This is uh, and this is this is where it gains, giving you as the programmer that full control of that as well with the collision check and potential cycle time savings, approximately. I'd probably say fifty percent. 50%. Mm. Okay, so we're now going to see the machine, the Vulcan machine, in action. When we come back, uh, Dominic and myself are going to go over to the CAM environment and look at uh, Hypermill in more detail. Steve, if you'd like to um, do the honors, I've got to remember how to do start. this. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Yeah, you... well, Last time it went bang, didn't it, with you? As you can see, it just does a nice clean pass on the first just to make sure and then you'll start seeing the learner's exact move happening. So how important is the tooling in this as well then? Oh, I think it plays a big role. It do play a big role. The reason being if you use a tool that has got like a if you use a tool that's got like a, a screw insert on there, if you use your ramping, it will probably loosen the tool, it might end up blowing the tool. So a solid tool like we've seen here with where it's been clamped down with a, like a, a groove insert, full radius, perfect tool for it. You can need it a lot more aggressively as well. I mean, I look at the, the this cycle and I think it's going to be quite warm when it comes out of here, isn't it? What does that mean to the tolerance of the part that you're machining or, um, or in fact, you know, the, the life of the actual insert itself? Yeah, well, looking at the insert itself, um, what happens when you use a max turning environment, especially our ramping, which we're very good at, it's a, it's a different way of doing tricordal than the norm where a lot of uh, systems would go with a learner zigzag. We've got, on top of that, a uh, ramping that you can activate. So what that is doing, it uses the front edge of the radius and as well as the back. So it means it uses the full circumference of the insert. Okay, now Steve, what, on the machine itself, what's the forces like though? Now you're going in this linear motion backwards and forwards. Does that have any effect on the overall um, you know, life of the machine, for example, and all the no, wearing no. parts? No, um, no. With, with the nature of the machine, we have, we have both options, linear and, and, and boxway. Um, and as Dominic referred to earlier, you, know, you can tell by the rigidity of the machine by looking at the, at the load. Um, and it's an interesting point that he makes that obviously Dominic has the, uh, the facility to go out and work in on a number of machine tools. Um, and today, obviously, we've seen some really impressive um, cutting strategies and, and data. So is there no concern about vibration here by doing this on this machine, Steve? No, no, the rigidity of the machine, you can, you can tell, it's typical engineers, you stand next to the machine and it's the touch and the, touch and the feel. Um, yeah, no, we have, we've had no issues. Sorry to interrupt there. Um, it's what Steve is saying, is, I fully agree. Um, normally when you start the first cut, because like me, I've never cut on one of these machines. I've got no background knowledge of these machines, I don't know. But when, a guy, when you give the guy the NC code to run on the machine, the first thing you as a programmer probably ask is to see the load. And as soon as I seen the load, and that X load is, is very low, I knew this machine can take it. And as you can see, uh, I'll bet you if you took look at the load now, the overall load would be nice in that amber mode, that smooth, that sweet spot of the machine, as we call it. And then you want your X to be very low. And this machine is doing a perfect example of that. Does that then mean, um, Steve, that if you maybe went up to one of your bigger machines, you could hit this even harder, do you think? This yeah, application? No, this, is, this is the baby. This is the entry, entry level machine. So naturally, as you work, you work your way through, um, through the product range, I don't think the camera can catch the other machines in the background there, but we've got a 250 and a 300. Um, with those, we have bigger spindles, bigger bearings, bigger turrets, um, and more horsepower. Uh, what, what about uh, the chip removal here as well, Dom, and, and how this is chipping? I mean, it looks like it's perfectly cutting at the moment, but would you ever encounter swarf issues with this? No, or Paul. Or have you developed the software in order to... Yes, um, the reason being that when you use a full radius insert, the, uh, the inclination and engagement is always quite smooth and it's, ra it's radial, it's creating like an arc cut uh, move into it. So the impact on your edge, on your insert, isn't that hard. So it doesn't run to a corner while having a full radius. So the full insert is covering the heat, meaning your tool life is increasing. Um, and what about collisions? When, when you look at 
sort of programming something like this? Do you have collision avoidance? I mean, it looks like there's, there's a lot of machining going on here. There's a lot of code being crunched. Um, where are the worries? You know, we right. like to get this to is this is where it gets not, what we thrive on in hard model is the fact that when you load your jobless, you always load a model that you check, do full collision checking against, and also a stock model. So what happens now? You're not really, you're also removing unnecessary air cutting within hard model. So when you trying to generate NC code from a calculated toolpath, we will not give you code. There will be a alarm popping up saying to you, "Sorry, mate, you've got collision on this toolpath. We can't give you code." So the benefit of that is, by the time you generate code, you know it's fully, fully collision checked, it's, it's air, unnecessary air cutting's been removed, and the, and the impact and the cut is brilliant. Sounds like it's pretty clever, eh, Steve? Yeah, um, clever as you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> what, what material are we cutting here, and what are the gains depending on the different materials? Again, um, this uh, material the spec isn't a problem. This is probably better for your more tougher materials, your other materials, your titaniums and stuff like that. This is where this is made, what this is designed and developed for, so that you can increase that tool life on the perfect titanium type of cut. Okay, now uh, in, in a few seconds, myself and Dominic are going to head over to the CAM environment and look at um, look at the hypermill uh, layout and structure. But before before we do that, Steve, um, you're quite impressed with this strategy. You're now offering the hypermill solution, aren't you, as part of a package with this machine? Yeah. So with the um, with the TC range, we're so used to customers wanting um, uh, looking at the cost per part. Um, and that naturally comes in with every with every Nakamura sale, you know, whether it be twin turrets um, or some form of automation. So to be able to take a software package like Hypermill, using the the, the, the the turning environment that comes with it on a commodity machine, um, you know, the, the the customers for value for money is getting a, getting an excellent package. Okay, now myself and Dominic are going to head over to the screen over here. Um, when we come back here, we're going to have a, a question and answer. So I would encourage you over the course of the next six or seven minutes to. Uh, get any comments or questions in and we'll be able to answer them uh, collectively in uh, yeah in a few minutes time come on dominic yep. let's go over but maybe you could walk us through what's happening on screen and and what these you know all of these areas dictate or do um, as you can see here, Paul, we are now in a CAM environment where we do the turning side of it. Um, the example that you see on the screen is our max turn that we are using, which is a round insert we always recommend. And where you see the green surface, that is the stock removal. That is what the software is showing that it will remove on this tool path. So, so what would be de determine the depth of the cut that's happening? Um, we call it the in-feed factor. So as you can see over here is the in-feed factor of 0.3 which is normally calculated around the percentage of the tool radius. Okay, and what about um, the, the actual speed of the process? So the speed the tool's moving, the speed of the spindle, what, what determines all that? How how's that algorithm worked out, if that's what it we've, is? Yeah, we've got a formula that we use, that we always use the VC that's provided from the tooling supplier. We have a general rule of thumb that we say a point, uh, 1.3 on uh, RPM, which is your G96 line. And then we also have the, um, the feed rate that's calculated uh, in the background that we give a formula of uh, 2.5 over the uh, rev feed per revolution. Okay, now I, I want to know more about this area as well here because this is, this is the zig zigzag that we've been talking about. That's correct, yeah, that's correct. So what you see here, at this moment, the strategy is set to learn here, which is the norm that you see on, mo on most CAM environment that people are using. And then you have also got the ramping as well as the zigzag and machining angle that you can use. So um, what I can do, Paul, I can show you if I flick between them how the image changes. Then it gives you a better understanding of what it's doing. So as you can see now, it's set to learn here. I'm just going to switch it over to ramping to show you how the changes. So now you see a ramping. So that image has now changed. So in Lernia, it will always machine towards the chuck and then I feed back to the starting point. Then feed in again and then I feed out again. When you change it over to a ramping, which is an extra area that we've got on top of our max turning environment, is what it's doing now, it will do a feed towards the chuck and if you have a tailstock support on here, the feed will now also uh, reverse feed. So now you have a constant cut. 
So what happened now, the tool stays in inclination at all times with the ramping. So you are now taking your toolpath to the next level in the max turn environment. Now, what, what about then if there's certain features around here that you, you don't want to have to come back to go back to, if you, if you see what I mean? Yes, this is what you were saying. This is where the zigzag kicks in. So what's happening now, when the tool is cutting in the ramping environment, it's, it's cutting forward and reverse, if that's a term we can use. And once you switch on zigzag, the tool will cut forward. If it sees in a dense area that you're cutting, the tool will force its way down if it can. It will recalculate itself to find a dense area and the zigzag will solve that problem for you. So now you get even less of a high feed move out. So you're improving your cycle time by your linear motions backwards and forwards, yes. but then you're, you're furthering that one step further. That's correct. By your zig, and, and correct correct. me, it's called on here, it is, it is the zig-zag function. That's correct. Is this, is this unique to Hypermill? Yes, this that is unique strategy? to us. Yeah, this, this is where it's, uh, you, get, you get it very norm that you get a linear and a zigzag on cam. Uh, we are unique with ramping and zigzag. Okay, right. Can we just see this doing the motion as well? Yeah, of course. Let me, let me switch on the toolpath that we've got ramping on, yeah? Speed is, uh, I'm always fascinated by how uh, easy these, these sort of platforms are to, to, to navigate and then to simulate to really give you a, a feel for what's happening in the machining environment here. So as you can see now, Paul, what it's doing, it's constantly staying down in these areas here on the ramping. Because of the ramping and the zigzag, you get minimum lifting in these areas. So, like for example, this was a, a more of a dense radius, where it's more rat for rat to the tool. That area there, when the tool feeds back into the ramping, if it sees, hold on, I can come down here, it will go down. Um, what's, what's this indicator on the yellow on the button there? That is what we call the cutting point in turning. So that when you simulate, you know exactly where your cutting point is, where you set it on the cue setter. So that is like you set it on the front face and on the bottom of the radio. If I use uh, on, if I were doing the back, using the back end, say maybe on the sub spindle, then that point will be on the back. And what about the wear on this insert here? Then it looks like we're very focused in in, in certain areas. Mm. Just, just obviously, that will mean that those areas will wear faster than the other areas of the tool? Not necessarily. Um, again, this is where the infeed factor comes into play. So your normal cut would be, say for example, I'm doing a 1.2 depth of cut. Now I'm getting into dense areas. The infeed factor will decrease. So instead of a 1.2 depth in the con condensed areas, it will now adjust, uh, adjust it to maybe a 0.8 or maybe a 0.6 or even less. Okay, now I know we've got lots of questions coming in. We're going to get to those shortly when we're going to be seated back down and we'll answer some of those, but do keep them coming in. Um, let, just let's, let's finally talk then here about the actual insert on the tool. This is a, a Seco tool, is it? Do you, That's correct. Do, do, do you favor any specific brand of tool or can um, all manufacturers of, of this sort of insert achieve these results? Um, nowadays, you. We are using a Seco, but I don't really see there's a limitation to who you're using. It's maybe the type of tool you want to use. Maybe if you can use a solid grooving inset, if you can use that with a full rat. Because the thing is, when you bolt it down, it's more robust, so you can heat it a lot harder. Um, are there any negatives to this strategy? You, I mean, we have to look pragmatically. Yeah, yeah under that. You know, yeah. Is there any areas that people just yes. have to yeah. think about? Um, for example, um, if you use a tool where you use a screwed inset, where you screw it down, you can't use ramping. Of course, what happens when it machines towards the chuck, the inset tightens. When you machine with ramping, it will machine forward and reverse. So what happens now, the inset loosens. So the screw loosens up, so you might blow your tool. When you do use ramping with an inset, with a screwed inset. Okay, so certain factors that you, yeah. you, you do yeah. have to consider. That's correct. Okay, let's go and uh, take a sit back okay. down and get to some of these questions. Uh, the, the first questions that we've got is that if you had an older machine, maybe, <clears throat> in fact, the, the question is a 12 year old machine running on a fan at control, which will obviously be 12 years old as well, would you still be able to, to perform this sort of strategy? 
Yes, you would be able to, Paul. Um, it all depends on machine memory as well, how much memory you've got under control because um, of the code. Because um, in Ampermore, we've got an area where you can uh, adjust your number of line numbers. So you can change it from a, from four to, say, one. So every say if you've had a four in your G1 uh, rectification, it will put a line number every four mil. If you change it to a one mil, it will also then generate a line number every one mil. So you can, you can adjust how many tool uh, line numbers you would like in your toolpath. So does that mean that the actual machining strategy would, would, would take longer though, because there's more, more code? No, but it will take more memory. You'll have more memory going onto the machine than a guy using, say, a newer machine where he's got less line numbers needed. Okay, um, Steve, one for you. These well, are... hold on. Alternatively, they can trade that machine in and buy a new Vulcan. <laughs> you bring me on to my next question, actually. Um, what is the price of this machine? We've had three people ask the, uh, the same question. Right, so the package delivered, Swarf conveyor training um, is 45 grand. 45 grand? 45 okay. grand. Okay, so that answers the question. We've also had, um, in fact, uh, one of your good customers, Matt Janess, say that he's watching. He's taken delivery of his Vulcan VMC, which he's very impressed with. So there's a, a good endorsement for you, um, Steve. Um, now, are there any other, another question for you, Dominic, are there any other strategies like this uh, 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 available on other CAM softwares, or is, is yours unique in any way? I know we spoke about the zigzag, but is you, that... Um, where we get unique is um, the ramping area, um, where, I don't know, I'm not, not that I'm familiar that other CAM systems can do the um, ramping side, but I know the linear and zigzag is very norm, but we've got the ramping on top of, on top of the linear. Okay, now... Um, Next, where are we seeing this people getting the best out of this strategy? I know we spoke about applications earlier, yeah. but wh wh where are you getting the most gains? It's your tougher materials. Because you know on your tough materials, tool life ain't great on the normal inserts, where the full radius insert with the trochoidal method, or our max turn as we call it, is where you'll see massive gains, is the tougher materials. Okay, um, and also, uh, oh, there's some more coming in here. Okay. Um, Interesting one here. What about the control? Um, we're using here a FANUC system. Yeah. Does it matter on the, if someone's got a Siemens in? Well, if they've, they've got a workshop with Siemens controls, no. is there no. any no, no difference? No difference. No difference. Okay. Okay. Well, that answers that one there. Um, yeah. It's also I've covered on. We've uh, we've got it on Heidenheim, Siemens, and FANUC. It's it's not it, it that's not a problem. Okay, keep them coming in. I've got questions coming into my ear at the, at the same time. Um, with the reduction in x-axis load, does this, does this strategy work effectively with machine load monitoring? Sorry, say that again? Does this strategy work effectively with machine load monitoring? You know this x-axis yes. load? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, it w you'll definitely have less wear and tear on your machine using this strategy. Okay. Definitely, yeah. Okay, definitely. that's a good one. Keep them coming in. Um, right, okay, what is the minimum in terms of machine you need to benefit from this? So, we're to, I mentioned about a 12-year-old machine. Someone said they've mm. got a 12-year-old machine. Is there any minimum requirement, i.e. in the hardware? I mean, we've spoken, Steve, about the box and the linear. Is there anything you say would say the machine must have in order to be able to no, adopt No, this? not that I'm aware of. I've not come across anybody who's had a limitation for this type of application. It's just very, it's a, it's a new norm where a lot of shop floors use still the old school format. I call it the old school format. Your C style or your W style inserts with your G71s and 72s in a FANUC environment where this is the long end code. It maybe takes more memory, but your cycle time is decreasing a lot. Like you've seen your four minutes or something like that. We've cut this out. Yeah, uh, it's a four minute cycle time. Fa I mean, fantastic metal removal. Yeah, yeah, in, and in that's that quite, time. A, quite a tough material we're cutting on. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we've, spoken, yeah. we've spoken about the materials. Um, another question in here is there a certain processing speed that the control has to have? So I suppose that falls in line with. Yeah, what that's we said all earlier. in line with the training and how we represent and explain it to our customers or users that uses this type of application. Yeah, we do provide all that info with them. Okay. Um, Steve, uh, one for you here. The. Um, the, the, the bar feed, uh, Vulcan bar feed, this is, your, this is your bar feed or this is part of a package, is it? Yeah, so again, we've, uh, we've partnered up with, um, with HydroFeed. So um, it's a Vulcan bar feed that obviously complements the Vulcan machine. Um, but it was important when we bought the, um, the bar feeds in um, that we partnered up with um, somebody in the UK to support it. And with HydroFeed being the, uh, well, the number, the number one in bar feed suppliers, there was no better choice 
um, then out there for us to, to, to join up with. Okay, uh, another one for, for you as well about the finance on this machine. What's the offering in terms of, you, you mentioned 45k, how can people fund this? Is this something that you well, can there's, count? Yeah, there's, 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 there's different applications, there's obviously funders out there that we, um, that we can put you in contact with. Um, we, we do have the ability to, to finance it in-house. Um, but again, speaking with, with every customer is an individual and they all have different needs. So rather than say we have a p package particularly available, um, we tailor it to suit each individual customer. Okay, uh, okay um, Dominic, on your side, training to learn how, how, how to actually um, get to grips with Hypermill. How long would it take? How does, how does it work? Well, um, Paul, um, we take great pride in our training that we provide to our users. Um, we're always trying to improve their method of cut when they come for training. And every time people have come for any of our training courses, they're always walking away there with, with a better method or a new idea. Not just in turning, but in milling as well. Um, we thrive in share, sharing our knowledge and we always want to have our customers to try and make the best, get the best result on the machine. And I, um, I cover this when I do cover the training course, the turning training course, I do cover it in there and I explain it to the customers how to use it and I even uh, program it and uh, do it step for step with them. And when we talk about uh, Open Mind, you, you were planning, I, I know we've had a pretty uh, you know, difficult year this year, but you were going to make a move, weren't you? Uh, you were moving in, into a new place in Bista. Is that still happening? Not at this moment, Paul. Because um, uh, again, with the situation that's happened, um, we, we find we find that uh, we find that um, we we in a good location at this point. So we'll take it from here and we'll reassess it next year. But it's pr been pretty. F I mean, I've seen evidence of a lot of your customers this year that have embraced your software. Just beyond the turn inside, why do you think it's been become so popular? I think um, doing the online training, Paul. Um, a lot of customers prefer face-to-face -face contact and by doing the online training you actually get a better feel and a better relationship and a connection with the customer and you're actually sharing more knowledge with them by doing online training. So I find that online training I have found with the new COVID situation, the online training has opened actually new doors and you actually have a nice relationship with the user and they sometimes show a part that they've got that they're actually struggling with. So you're actually throwing some toolpaths on that part at the end of the training course. So everybody within the training course is actually picking up things from that. But my interest in the cam as well, I mean, we know how important the machines are, Steve. I, I, I used to sell them, not as many as, as you probably. But yeah, how, how integral is it to make sure you've got the right software solution these days? You know, you, this is demonstrating that, isn't it? You can have the best machine in the world, but if you're not driving it correctly, you're not getting the most out of it, are you? Yes, that is correct. Um, one of my colleagues um, has this remark, and I actually like it. Um, it's like if you go down and you buy a Ferrari, I say I buy a Ferrari, you only as good as the, the Ferrari will only be as good as the driver. Same as this machine. This, this is a, uh, this like um, Steve was saying, this is your low end machines, but with a decent package on top of it. You can compete with, you can put prices on there with guys that's more expensive machinery, what this machine has just demonstrated today. Yeah. So it's all depending on cam and software. It's, I find the combo needs to be balanced, to be fair, if you know what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another question coming, does the zigzag movement save you a lot of machining time? I know we've touched on that over in the sorry, cam say environment. That again, sorry? Does the zigzag movement save you a lot of machining time? Yes, you will gain, um, the zigzag is actually an extra within ramp and you'll definitely gain cycle time. I reckon if I, if I push more zigzag, you'll probably gain about another 10% on top of your ordinary trochoidal method, your max turn. Now I know we've got um, some of your guys coming to MTD next week to do some technical corners where we're going to be talking about lots of different subjects that um, Open Mind are involved in. Maybe quickly you could just tell us about the virtual machining, uh, the virtual machine, because that's something that's been big for you recently, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's a game changer. It's a massive game changer, and um, I, I've, I've had some personal first line experience with it uh, recent, in recent weeks, where I've done a demonstration cut and it worked brilliantly for me. Basically, I provide the guy with the code, done the similar works, boom, happy days. Get the machine load, see the tool, the NC code, full collision. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So what, what is the major benefit to it, Dom? Just tell, what is the major benefit to the virtual the machine? The thing is you do not have to go like um, to a third party or it's a third party interface. It's a direct interface within Hypermall. So you have got Hypermall and you've got a Hypermall simulation tool 
that's working together with um, Hypermall Post. So everything is Hypermall. That's it. Okay, okay. Um, Steve, we've had one of your other customers comment in. They purchased a VMC 1600 over in Ireland. Uh, All right, looking, yeah, yeah. Jamie's had to, a good run in Ireland as well. Yeah, they're looking forward to getting the, mach the machine in. Uh, they actually said that in terms of competitiveness, uh, they, they, you couldn't be beaten on value for money. So that's why they purchased the machine. Yeah. That's a, you've well, sold a few of these. Competitive and performance is what, it's what people are looking for. And uh, you know, through through recent over recent weeks, especially with the COVID situation, we've we've never bizarrely we've never seen as many customers through the door into our showrooms um, doing what we're doing behind us now is dem demonstrating machines. Yeah. Okay. Another question: uh, Can Max turning be used with solid boring bars that don't have a round end? We are looking at it. It's not out on this release, um, but we are bringing it in. Yeah, it is on the list. Yeah. It's on the list. Okay, Steve, if you'd have come into this year thinking how many Vulcans that you wanted to sell before COVID and what you've actually done um, today, it's been, it's, you'd be quite happy, wouldn't you, with what we've gone through in the last six yeah, months? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Martin Doyle won't be, won't, we won't be happy, you know, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's watching now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not here, so us. I can get away with saying that. Um, yeah, we are really pleased with, with, with Vulcan, even, even with this current situation, the machines that we've put out there, um, getting customers through the door. It's, it's, it's very easy to sit in front of a brochure and reel off all the technical spec and, and, and say that it's the, the, it's the next best thing to come to ETG, but to physically get people in here doing all variations of, of, of demonstrations, trials, cuts, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's been really, really good um, for us. We've, we've launched it, we feel, at the, at the right time. The right time, good, good. Okay, we're going to wrap this uh, live stream up now. We've been going for half an hour, would you believe? Um, we're going to draw it to a close, but what I would say is that it doesn't end here. Uh, of course, this, this video, whether you're watching it on LinkedIn, YouTube or Facebook, um, will still be live after the event, so you'll be able to still comment and of course uh, ask your questions which which we will answer um, I would I would oh, oh, we got all right we we got one more we got one more Dominic where did your love for machining start this is the last question where did my love for machining obviously start? your enthusiasm comes yeah. across immensely yeah. where did you well as you know with the accent I'm from South Africa and I work for a motorsport company where they used to build the GT40s and the Shelby Cobras and I've also I've fallen in love straight away at that stage, and that's where it's grown on. I, I, I can't finish without asking you the same question, Steve, because that would be unfair. Or well, do you not have a love for machining? I don't know. No, it's well, just for I, 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 I tried to get um, lots of jobs, but the only place would take me on, so I started started from the bottom, <laughs> it, hitting the button, and, and worked my way through, and yeah, sat in sat in Mr. Dawes' coattails. Well, I've got to say, you've both uh, come a long way and done a fantastic job. Um, you need to keep tuned to MTD CNC. Lots of these live streams coming uh, in the future. This is the best way to engage with industry at the moment. Um, you can, as you've seen throughout today's show, ask us questions. You can comment uh, and you can find out the answers in real time. But if you haven't been able to follow the whole show today, then of course you can after the event still get in contact with the guys at ETG or at um, or at Open Mind. Uh, finally, once again, apologies for being a little bit late on the stream. These technical issues do happen with our cameras, but I'm assured they don't happen with the machine and hypermill software. Thank you very much for joining us, Thanks, guys. Paul. Thank, uh, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.